Hello students, welcome back. And now we are finished with the discrete probability distribution. That means half of our tensions are already over and new half of the interesting things are going to come up now. That is the normal distribution which is also called as Gaussian distribution because it was Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician who gave this normal distribution. Students, as we discussed in the very, very beginning in the introductory video of this chapter, Theoretical Distributions, we said there are certain continuous distributions like normal, chi-square, student's t distributions and the reason we said this is because the continuous distributions always have a particular interval and between the intervals certain distributions lie unlike discrete where a specific value was given. So students, that is why normal distribution is called as a continuous distribution or a continuous probability distribution because the values run around a certain interval. So students, this is also called as Gaussian distribution as I told you and let us look into some more details about normal distribution. Students, we saw that Bernoulli, binomial, poson, hypergeometric, all these were discrete and all the discrete probability distributions had a PMF, probability mass function, whereas normal distribution is a continuous distribution and students, any continuous distributions do not have a probability mass function, but they have something called as a PDF. So the PDF here is P of X is equal to 1 by sigma square root 2 pi into e to the power minus half into X minus mu by sigma the whole square. So students, this is the probability density function for a normal distribution. P of x is equal to 1 by sigma square root 2 pi into e to the power minus half into x minus mu divided by sigma the whole square. Now, there should be a range for this. What is the range for a normal distribution? You can write the range as in this way minus infinity mu or x less than plus infinity. This would be the range for a normal distribution. Now, you might be having a doubt. Sir, why is this the range that is minus infinity to plus infinity? Let us see certain properties of normal distribution. So, students, normal distribution has a bell-shaped curve. You can see this. This is a bell-shaped curve. And in this bell-shaped curve, the curves that are there, they never touch the x-axis. They never touch this line here. Never touch the line here. That is why this is called minus infinity. This is called as plus infinity. Now, the middle area, this one, this is called as mu or it is also known as mean. That means it brings us to a very important aspect that is in a normal distribution, in a normal distribution, mean is represented by the symbol mu and one more parameter is the standard deviation or sigma. That means normal distribution students has two parameters which is mu and sigma. Secondly, students, in a normal distribution, the mean, median and mode all are equal. The mean, median and mode, all the three are the same. Say for the normal distribution, they have given mean is equal to 25. 
and they have asked you what is the median median is also 25 what is the mode even that is 25 mean median and mode all the three are equal in a normal distribution and therefore normal distribution is unimodal that means it has got only one mode definitely it will be one mode because if there is only one mean and one median even the mode should be the same thing because mean and median and mode all are equal that is the reason next point number four or property number four property number four is nothing but the quartile deviation students understand quartile deviation Quartile deviation for a normal distribution is 0 0.675 sigma. That means the quartile values from the central value are 0.675 standard deviations away. So, if the quartile deviations are 0.675 deviations away, students we have learnt last year there is something called as quartile 1, quartile 2 and quartile 3. Quartile 2 is the median. Mean and median are the same. That means this one itself. So what is Q1 and Q3? Q1 is somewhere this side 0.675 standard deviations away. Q3 is also 0.675 deviations away. So students remember Q1 is equal to mean that is mu minus 0 0.675 standard deviation and Q3 is mu plus 0.675 standard deviations. So understand this quartile 1 is mean minus 0 0.675 standard deviations away and quartile 3 is mu plus 0 0.675 standard deviations. Next, what is the mean deviation? The fifth property, mean deviation, mean deviation is equal to 0 0.8 standard deviations. Mean deviation, that means from the central value, the deviation of the mean is 0 0.8 standard deviations. So, students, here, in a normal distribution, these points here, the gap here and the gap here are called or these curves are called as points of inflection, points of inflection. And remember, a normal distribution has two points of inflection and those are called as mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma. These are called as points of inflection. Now, from the central value, definitely these are called as points of inflection, but there must be certain parameter for it saying how much is the deviation, how much is the category. So, students, even for that, we have different values which we will be learning it further. As of now, copy down these properties. These are very important. Once we finish with this, we will come up with some more properties of normal distribution. Okay, students. Now, let us find out the area properties of normal distribution. Let me draw this bell-shaped curve once again. Hope this looks like a bell-shaped curve. This is a bell-shaped curve. Here is the central value that is mu. This is minus infinity. This is plus infinity. Now students, understand the area under the curve or area under the bell-shaped curve is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So remember, what is the total area from minus infinity to plus infinity? Total area 
फ्रॉम माइनस इंफिनिटी टू प्लस इंफिनिटी इज इक्वल टू वन दैट इज टोटल एरिया अंडर द कर्व इज इक्वल टू वन दैट मीन्स बिफोर द मीन देर इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एरिया एंड आफ्टर द मीन ऑल्सो देर इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एरिया सो आफ्टर दिस दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इवन दिस इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टोटली कम्स टूगेदर टू वन now we should know the new minus standard deviations away or the new minus standard deviation limits area properties so the first one students let us see what it is let me draw a bell shaped curve in the bell shaped curve i told you this is new this is minus infinity and plus infinity if from the central value we go one deviation away or one standard deviation away say a little deviating from the central value this area is mu minus sigma and here it is mu plus sigma this is mu minus sigma if you in case you cannot see it i will write it still more bigger this area from the central area from this part from the central line this part till here this is mu minus sigma and this is mu plus sigma and this area constitutes to be 0.6826 0.6826 next is one more bell shaped curve minus infinity plus infinity this is mu what if from the central value there are two standard limits away that is this entire area mu minus 2 sigma mu plus 2 sigma how much will this area constitute to this area students that is mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma will be equal to 0.9544 and finally we have one more i will write it up this side that is what if from the central value that is mu if it is three standard deviations or three standard deviation neighborhoods or three standard deviation limits away maybe till here this area students almost 99.73 of the area is covered here in mu minus 3 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma the area under this is 0.9973 so students this is the areas under different conditions under the first standard deviations away it is 0.6826 under mu plus or minus 2 sigma it is 0.94 0.9544 and in mu plus or minus 3 sigma it is 0.9973 in case they ask you for one mark questions what is the area under mu minus sigma or mu minus 2 sigma mu minus 3 sigma the answer should be at the tip of your mind so that you immediately write it in the exams and finally to recall understand students the total area under the curve is always 1 from the center value to the right side it is 0.5 from the center to the left infinity also it is 0.5 and these are the various areas under the different standard limit condition